When the weather was really bad in the UK a few months back, we did a runner to Portugal and one of the best circuits in Europe, Portimao. We had with us some fine motor vehicles. But perhaps the fastest was the Porsche 991 GT2 RS MR. I know, catchy little name. MR stands for Manti Racing. It's an improved chassis, aero and braking package for a car that already has more than enough power. And if you've not heard of Manti, then think of it as the ultimate Skunk Works Porsche outfit. You have a standard Porsche 911, then you go to Porsche Motorsport and you have a GT3 and an RS. Well, Manti makes the RS model even more RS. Hypothetically, and I mean this hypothetically, you've gone out in a GT2 RS, right? And I've said to you, as a friend, you need to make that car a bit faster around the lap. Now, of course, your brain would say, shut up, mate, that's ridiculous. I'm still clearing up the mess from my undercrackers after what that car just did to me. But Manti, the now mostly Porsche-owned race team that deals with this stuff, well, it's gone and done just that. It's created the GT2 RS MR, Manti Racing, which is an aero and suspension wheel and tire package for the GT2 RS, it's about 90,000 euros, which sounds ridiculous until you experience it. This is the best car that's based on a normal street car that you could take on a racetrack with number plates that I've driven. I know that's quite a narrow niche, but it is sensational. Because it's like a wild ride, you know? It's not some accurate little racing car. This is, this is a yob, this thing. You know, it wants to slide everywhere. I got 700 horsepower, for God's sake. I can smoke this bad boy wherever I want to, but I can also set lap times as well. What a flipping machine! Now, I do it no justice by just doing great big skids, though. So we'll just go a little bit sensible on the straight and we'll talk you through some of it. So suspension, basically a KW system stolen from the GT3R racing car. It's expensive, still has the helper spring. It does that very clever thing that expensive suspension does. It takes all of those light imperfections, the stuff that your eye says, well, that's gonna cause a bit of a bump, and it just irons it out. But then the moment you put load into the car, it supports itself and it stays flat. It's a magic trick. It's so good. I mean, it's miles better than the standard suspension, which in itself is very, very good. There's a new brake pad material to give a bit more bite. That does make a big difference. This thing really does stop. Look at the ride heights as well. The thing is buried into the ground, especially at the back. They've taken some rake out and that gives the car much better stability on the entry to a turn. You can add lock, trail it in. Always a problem in a 911. Then there's just the way the thing goes. Wow. They've done nothing to the engine apparently. Well, this one feels pretty angry. This is an engineering car. It's done 49,000 kilometers and it feels fit as a fiddle. And this is the actual car that holds the record for a modified streetcar around the Nürburgring with Lars at the wheel at six minutes, 40 seconds, which is quite difficult to comprehend really, isn't it? This also has a lot more aero. They fitted a massive gurney to the rear wing, different end plates, it's got a different front splitter. They've managed the underbody. It's got a different diffuser, big difference. Have a look at the onboard fast lap now. And you can see that I can stay flat in places in this car, well, that you just can't in normal cars, even in hypercars. So the big question is, this amazing tweaked up GT2 RS should have the performance to take care of hypercars or stay with them. Let's see what happens.
circuit yeah. on an outlap on scrub tyres. It's a f animal. Wow. Well, yep. So 49.5. That's what we yeah. need. We have to look it up a bit now. I take, I'll take it. It's pretty far. It's not so far off now. Yeah. Life in the old dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have to cal recalibrate your head because it's happening so fast. Yeah. And you have also, because it has more aerodynamic than I thought, more aero in the quick stuff. Yeah, definitely. Because you're like, I'm wide open through the through the hole, which you shouldn't be in a car like that. <laughs> and the whole thing is, as you go to it, it's like smashed into the ground. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's two and a half Very seconds quicker than I've ever gone around here. <laughs> in a 918 or a P1 or anything. That's amazing, huh? In a, in a GT2 RS. It's just an old 911. <laughs> 49,000 kilometers, probably 50 now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of things going on here. First of all, the performance of the car around Portimao is staggering. 49.5 or just under 49.45 is the fastest I've been here by a long way. And it's a new lap record for the circuit. But Lars, the guy that developed it, he went even quicker. So he can have the record of 48 something. We'll confirm it in a minute. Um, so fair play to him. And he's young and He's good at this, so I happily defer to the better man. The other thing that needs to be noted is this car is gorgeous. The pattern of this car, this is the car that did the Nürburgring lap record. I love the fact that it's got a cup car seat in it. I love the fact that it's got a 911R passenger seat with a hands tooth trim. It's all a bit ratty inside. This should never be changed. If anyone at Porsche, and they stood there, if anyone changes this car, tries to make it look optically clever, then it's gonna, ch gonna hunt you down. Leave it as it is, because it's a piece of history, and it's just utterly gorgeous. The only thing is, these Alcantara steering wheels get a bit munged up, you know? They've got too much DNA from other people on them, so it's that. So that's progress. You come here three years after you drove a McLaren P1 and set a certain lap time, and you go two or three seconds quicker in a slightly modified series production Porsche with no hybridity and nothing clever. Well done, Michelin. Well done, KW. Well done, Porsche. Well done, Manti. So I'm stood on the hill above the beautiful Portimao circuit with Lars Kern, who is a Porsche factory race driver and, most importantly, a test driver. For these purposes, we're talking to him as a test driver. And this is the man that set the Nürburgring lap record in the amazing GT2 RS MR, that stands for Manti Racing, but also has just broken the lap record at Portimao. Everyone clap behind, please. <laughs> okay. Um, tell you. us how the car felt round here. Um, it felt like it was made for Portimao. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the downforce is mega. Um, also the suspension, which was made for the Nürburgring, fits perfectly for here. So this was quite a surprise for us. Yeah. Sure, we are, we are running a little bit lower compared to the Nürburgring. I mean, my first lap was already a record breaker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. When that was an installation <laughs> lap, the car had not run since it broke the Nürburgring lap record. And they said, we could just go out and do an install lap to make sure it still rolls straight. And the first flying lap was the record. Was the, exactly, it was already a record. It was already a record, then yeah. they went on and broke it again. Yeah. Outrageous, really. Um, so my mm. thoughts were that I just couldn't believe how stable the car was on entry. Mm. That, that lower at the rear and the sophisticated damper just gave so much confidence to when you rotate the car in. You just oh. think, I can go faster, 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 and it doesn't follow you around, does it? Yeah, exactly. This was, was a key part. I mean, on the Nürburgring, you need a really stable rear going into the corner, and this was quite important for, for me as a driver to, to trust the car and this is what you feel here. If you corner the car, it rotates really good, but when you go back with the steering a little bit, the rear just stays and it's like, yeah, it's just, it's perfect on the entry and also the traction on the exit is incredible. And this tire, talk us through this Cup 2R tire, because this feels like a big step to me. The tire is, is for sure, it's a quite important thing, but it's not the key part. I think aerodynamics and the suspension are the key parts of the, of the car. The tire we already had on the yellow car, which we broke the record before on the Nürburgring. Um, so we knew the tire, um, but I think the, the biggest difference is the suspension and yeah. the aerodynamics. So it's a KW damper, yeah? Exactly, it's a KW 3 bar damper. The same damper basically we use with the GT3R on the Nordschleife. Yeah. It's just different spring rates uh, because the car is a bit heavier and you have to have to have a little bit more comfortable. It still runs the helper spring I saw though. Yeah, exactly. And how quickly are you through the helper spring? I have no idea. No? <laughs> it, because it has a very, very, I use the word sophisticated sense of, of ride yeah. Over over the sort of the smaller bits of the circuit, where you think you're gonna you you see something that's gonna impact quite hard in the car, yeah. it floats through it, a bit yeah. like a rally car. Yeah. And that mu that helper spring must be you doing something there. Could be, honestly, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, it was just me being the sensor in the car, telling the guys, okay, 
feels better like this, yeah, feels yeah. better like this. Um, and the KW guys and the Manta engineers, they did all the rest. And uh, yeah, at the end, I was just feeling super comfortable. Also on the Nürburgring, same like here. Um, it's super easy to do a quick lap. Everybody feels comfortable in the car from the first minute. And this is, I think, what it's all about. Because this is, it looks like a monster, but it's not. Yeah, that's what's interesting, isn't it? Because inherently, now you feel, you start to question how you felt about the standard car. The standard car is fantastic. Yeah. It's a great chassis for a road track compromise. But if you're going to do more track driving, you have to have that. Exactly. Once you've yeah. driven it, yeah. it's like yeah. really good red wine. You know, there's no going back, <laughs> is there? It's like turning left on an aeroplane. Exactly. There's no going back. I mean, sure, the, the, the package is quite, we talked about yesterday, it's quite expensive. Um, but, uh, but at the end of the day, um, as you mentioned, it's you have to have this. Uh, if you once experienced the level of grip and the level, level of performance and the level of trust you can have with this car, you can never go back. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely sensational. Now, very quickly, talk me through what this was like around the Nordschleife, because I, I wonder whether you've been lobotomized. They just take your brain out like this when you go in to do the lap. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, honestly, it was, really, it was really comfortable for me. It was uh, also, when we prepared the lap, I already did lap times quite close to the 640, so we knew what we what we have and what we can do. Um, so it was not a not a monster lap. We just did what the car can do. Um, so there's not one part of the circuit that every time you get to it, you think, okay, it just swallow a bit harder. There are parts. Surely, for sure. sure. I mean, what, you ah. must be going into that thinking. What if something goes wrong here? Yeah, but but this is a point where you normally yeah you go go through with 270, 275, and that's it. But parts like uh, Schwedenkreuz and, and Flugplatz, these are the parts like, okay, the boys know you have more aero, they're gonna see on the data if you use it, so try to use it. Um, so these are the parts where it's quite, you're like, okay, go through. Uh, <laughs> but it's normal. Uh, so it's the lap um, and it was, it was quite dark. This didn't help at all. Um, we wanted to start the lap at six o'clock but they kept us waiting until half past six and it was already quite dark. You see it on the video, you see my lights on the street going. And uh, in the first part of the trek, I was quite struggling with the uh, orientation. I was like, oh, okay, it's quite dark. And, uh, but for the rest of the lap, it was good. But sure, our target was going sub 40. Everybody knows that and sure, um, but we had just this one lap and yeah, it's what it is. I'm sure you'll go back there and have another go at some point. I'm pretty sure as well. I, I think it's a stunning <laughs> achievement and I, I hope that you still get a great sense of excitement when you're going there and doing that because genuinely, for so many people, you're living the dream. I mean, you're the man that's out there. You, I bet you can't believe because when you were younger, I bet you were reading about yeah, you know, sure, the horse sure. and yeah, things like yeah, that. And now yeah. you're that guy. Yeah. No, I was reading that stories and I was following these lap times and I don't know, I've seen guys crashing trying to 740. <laughs> <laughs> And now we do 640, it's like, okay, it's really crazy, but you see how the car develop. And if you go back to an old car or a car from 10 years ago, 15 years ago with the old tires, then you understand why. Yeah. Um, so it's nothing, yeah. I mean, the technique changed a lot, tires changed a lot. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, for me, it's mega, nothing better. One of the best cars I've driven ever, honestly. Cool. So well cool. done. Thank you very much. Cheers, boss. So there it is then quicker than a hypercar. The new street legal record holder at Portimao. I think we need to keep this competition going.